Hello everyone and welcome to today's live session. Here in Germany it's a beautiful Sunday, it's Easter Sunday and at the same time also it's a holiday so that means it's a very very calm day over here. So and I would say because our our schedule for today is pretty busy first of all we are going just to answer some of the questions that you were asking inside the group and then afterwards we will directly start continue practicing our form actually I would prefer to just do more more practice today because it's so beautiful but nevertheless there are some of the questions I think um, that should be answered so therefore I would say Miao Jian you can just read the questions out for everyone and then we start from there. Okay, also don't worry everybody because our camera is not broken, it just accidentally is a filter on it, I think. Okay, uh, the first question is when you feel a little bit exhausted or painful after some day of intense practice it's best to rest or to go ahead especially if you over 50 so the only thing that i can say to that question right now is if you should rest if you feel some pain especially when you are reaching or when you have a certain age i think it's uh, like this the older our body gets, the slower our recovery phase becomes. So the slower it is until our body is able to to recover. Therefore it means uh, it's necessary to rest. It's necessary to rest in order to let your body also reprogram itself. But on the other side, now the question is what you are relating to as being pain. And there is the type of pain, I mentioned it already, it is the pain of laziness, which means that you have some muscle ache, that you feel some other sensations inside the body that you normally don't have if you don't have any type of practice. This is very normal. But then there's also the other type of pain, which is the pain of exhaustion or also the pain of you are uh, about to destroy something and therefore it becomes very important for you to identify which which type of pain are we talking about but nevertheless if you really have intensive training you need to rest and not just only like after one day also during the day for example some of you maybe have heard already that this year we are going to have a summer camp going on in this monastery and one of my uh, Kung Fu masters from the UK Shifu Yan Lei he's going to come and teach also the students that are joining the summer camp and he's very much specialized in the field of combat of combat arts meaning to to practice the martial arts and the Kung Fu training especially for competition and therefore those two weeks that Shifu Yan Lei will be here, he already announced to me that uh, people need to rest a lot and therefore his training sessions normally are starting very early like from 6 o'clock until 7.30 so this is just one and a half hour of very very intensive training then afterwards we're going to have breakfast and 10 o'clock for another 90 minutes is another training session um, which is followed up by a three hour or two hour break because people need to rest in between that time elsewise uh, it's really 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 hard to 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 cope with this type of intensive training but on the other side you do not need to put your body under stress on a regular basis too much yeah, the point of all of the practices whether it is qigong whether it is kung fu eventually it is there to make us feel good 
to make us feel more alive, to make us feel more vital. There is no point in practicing all of these things and after one week, after two weeks, three weeks, you actually only feel that you have more injuries, that you are more handicapped. So this is kind of pointless. Yeah? So when you want to use the martial arts and the Qigong practices on the, on the long term and build something up which is more sustainable for yourself, then therefore you need to pay very much attention uh, to keep balance. Balance between activity and balance between the time for resting. But also at the same time, if you are preparing for something special, if you are preparing for a special event, if you are preparing for a competition, yeah, what does it mean? It means you are preparing yourself in order that your body will be able to deliver some performance. And your body is able to deliver that performance. But every time that you are asking for performance, which is out of the ordinary, which is out of the normal, it is costing you something. It is costing you something. Maybe if you are young, you, you don't really care because the body is just recovering so quick in those moments, it doesn't really matter. But maybe afterwards, one day, you're gonna pay some price for it. And yes, so therefore keep in mind, don't over exaggerate in all of the practices, especially in those three months. Yeah, the reason why we are spending so much time with the breath, with with the feeling, with the imagination of the mind, with the feeling between your palms. The point of all of this is, I want you to increase your sense of sensitivity for your own body. Because the more sensitive you become for yourself, then you will know, you will know what type of pain is it now? What type of signal is it now? And where is it? Yes. So, yeah. Find the balance between training and resting. Okay. John is which is the best? So the next question is which is the training? Um, best to wake up in the morning which is the best to calm down in the evening and which is uh, which is uh, the time irrelevant for when it comes to this type of question I always like to relate to just watch out at the seasons the four seasons winter spring summer autumn so winter time I often relate to as the time when we are inside of ourselves, when we are inside the houses, when we are about to recover, when we need to keep the energy in. Meaning winter time relates to, for example, your sleeping time, the sleeping period. So cover yourself with a blanket, keep the center of the body warm, keep the kidneys warm, keep the belly warm, keep the chest warm keep the energy inside keep the energy inside very close to the center so now after winter time starts spring spring means energy starts to get slowly into shape and so therefore all the types of practices that are slowly raising up your energy level raising up the heat inside your body this is what I would regard as being useful to start your day yeah so that can also mean that uh, some people prefer waking up in the morning and just do the sitting meditation right away just in order to keep the mind not already starting to flow out meaning directly so things to avoid let's say like this things to avoid is waking up from the bed and watching on the mobile phone this is definitely one thing to avoid within the first half an hour or one hour so this directly you can 
if you want something not to do this belongs to that category don't start the day watching on the mobile phone also don't watch on the laptop and don't check any emails therefore some people prefer waking up and just starting with the sitting meditation watching the breath for example other people prefer to make some slow stretching exercises other people prefer to wake up and just directly go for a run and almost regardless of what this exercise is what I think you need to pay attention on is that you are slowly slowly giving your body and also giving your mind the time to um, to wake up to activate to become ready to warm up it's yeah you need to warm up the body first because you are a bit before you are asking for some type of performance that you want from the body to deliver or that you want from the mind to deliver and therefore the initial few minutes half an hour one hour uh, after waking up do something that prevents you from thinking you do not want to start the day thinking you want to start the day doing and just experiencing but not thinking and this is why for example just going out for a run yeah go for a run and run don't go for a run and think or uh, go to sitting meditation but watch the breath don't sit there and just think already again what you need to do during the day yeah after you wake up there will be plenty of more hours to come where you have time to think about all different types of stuff but what is important in this way of learning yeah the reason why do we call this complete training why do we call it self mastery because it has definitely something to do about the way how you personally are handling yourself and this means for example it's not just about in this course that you are learning or that we are sharing things with you um, what you are supposed to do that this is just the one area but another very important area is especially what you are not supposed to do what you are not supposed to do and to that category there belongs quite a, a large large area of things that most of you know already I mentioned it also earlier everybody knows what in the way when it comes to the habit of living your daily life you know what type of habits you have that are not beneficial for you so therefore what does it mean also learn to let go and stop doing the things that you already feel like and know they are not good for me so two areas the one thing is we are trying to share with you methods in order to for you to develop some new abilities but what you at the same time also must a little bit watch is to undo things to undo things undo things meaning already leave away the stuff that you know is not good for you yeah and one of these things is waking up in the morning thinking question how to go deeper to address emotional tensions through body work does emotion always need to be experienced in order in order to be integrated okay can you read this question one more time please how to go deeper to address emotional tensions through body work does emotions always need to be experienced in order to be integrated okay the first three months the methods of the first three months it is about going inside paying attention 
dealing with things, focusing, concentrating on everything that lies within you, not beyond yourself. Because if there is something that you can change about your body, if there is something that you can change about all the areas that you are consisting of, yeah, and you, for example, there, what do we say? You have the body, you have your mind, you have the consciousness, you have your emotional states, you have your perception. So there are many things that in the way how we are seeing the world that belong to yourself. The body is only one aspect of it. Your thoughts or the mind is another aspect of it. The emotional states is again another aspect of you. So there are the so-called five aggregates for example. But what's the point of doing all of this? The point is that there are in this world I think some principles that are beyond any religion, that are beyond any type of belief. It is just as it is. And one of the hindrances, one of the challenges that we all are going to face sooner or later is the fact of that naturally, if you don't pay attention, our body, our mind and our emotions, they are starting to become hard. They are starting to become hard, stiff, unchangeable. Your mind becomes less adaptable. Your, your body starts to regenerate and recover more slowly because everything is heading towards stagnation. Everything is heading towards stagnation. So, but what is the observation that in the Taoist principles or in the Taoist teaching, what did Lao Tzu observed? He observed that when a person starts to die, so when the life is running out of, of yourself or of a person, the body gets hard, the body gets stiff and in opposition to this picture he had the child which just came to this world being very soft the body being very soft but at the same time also being very weak so his conclusion was that the soft and the weak belongs to life the hard and the stiff belongs to death so now it is exactly the heart and the stiff. What is inside of us hard and stiff? Our muscles start to become hard and stiff if you don't train them. If you are sitting too much in front of the PC, if you are having a type of work where you are having too often the same repetition of movements, then sometimes you end, end up with the shoulders being very tense over here and then it stays after a while. But all of this tension, everything that inside of the body starts to contract, starts to contract, yeah, contraction is the beginning state of stagnation. Focus is the beginning state of stagnation. So every time when energy starts to condense, when energy is being compressed, when energy is being focused, then we are moving towards the direction of stagnation. But sometimes we need to have this focus, we need to have this concentration and we need to have the ability to, um, to condense energy because without this, this condensation and focused energy we are not able to manifest something. We are not able to build something up. So at the moment, very carefully, this is not about stagnation is good, stagnation is bad, softness is good, softness is uh, bad. I'm not talking about this. I'm saying that softness has consequences and 
stagnation and condensed energy also has um, consequences. Now, what does it mean to become more aware of yourself, to live a life based on the principles of yin and yang? What does it mean? It means that you need to become aware. What about yourself? <laughs> what about yourself is soft at the moment? What about yourself at this moment today is hard? Do you have an idea on your mind which is sitting there already for a too long time and just remained unchanged? Yeah, are you still trying to to fulfill an, a dream, an idea in your mind and it's since five years it's there but nothing has happened yet but it's still making you busy in the mind? Or are there other things that you always were dreaming of but until now nothing has manifested from it yet? It still stays in the world of dreams. And so that means it's always the question to observe yourself where are you in the too fine and soft world and where are you maybe too much blocked in the manifested world uh, already. And there now we need to find the balance. So, and now back to the initial question about the emotional, <laughs> the emotional uh, tension. Like I said, this is just one area of, of five, let's say, that we are regarding our body to be consistent of, to be consisting of. But if you are not able to simply resolve the physical tension about yourself, if you're not able to resolve the mental blockages that we already have in our mind, I, is, I think, is my opinion now, I think it is very difficult to then enter and even try to adjust something on the emotional state. Yeah? Besides that, besides that, sometimes in the teachings of Shaolin we say, we have the body, the mind, and the emotions. Uh, sometimes you hear it, we have those three areas. But sometimes we also just say it's body and mind. One, two, finished. So, and why is that? It is because what your emotional state, what your emotions are expressing, Maybe you can observe it on yourself. What your emotions are expressing is just the postponed reaction of what way before you already started implementing into your mind. So what it means, it means your emotional states are only going to reflect, they are just reflecting something that somewhere in the past your mind was confronted with. So and this is the reason why in that second example where I say we have the body and we have the mind, why do the emotions not appear there anymore? Because if you want to change something about the way how you feel about the emotions that you have, the key is discipline the mind. The key is, it's in the mind. In the way your mind, you have access to the mind, you will be, you will get access to all other areas as well, yeah. And therefore, sometimes if you keep on uh, following this training, you will realize mostly I'm talking about the body, and I'm talking often about the mind probably. And I don't use the word emotion too much because for me it's embedded into, into the mind. The mind is the starting point of everything. If the mind cannot see it, you cannot see it. The eyes cannot see it. If the mind can see it, the eyes can see it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Next one, Miao Jian. Next question 
is if um, in the same session in one day um, you should combine hard and soft practice or keep it separate or does it even matter for beginners at all hard and soft practice okay. we need both we need both but just maybe some of you have already seen for example the last tea talk that i published like a, a few days ago i was talking to one of my one of my master friends from uh, from the netherlands and there is something that uh, i really like about uh, what what he said it was about how can you actually test how can you actually test that any of the practices that you are making there that any of the training that you are following how do you know that you are actually making progress is it because the mind is imagining that you are strong is it because you just feel strong no well and uh, to make it short the point is sometimes we need to have some milestones we have to we need to have some milestones so something it is not about imagining you feel better it's not about imagining you are stronger it's not about imagining you are more flexible it is it is about you can show it to someone that you have become stronger you can show it to someone that you have become more flexible yeah and therefore when it comes to the practice of soft and hard my observation for the moment is like this I think all of us everyone first of all you need to have more physical strength you need to pay attention build up more physical strength build up more stamina more endurance so how to get to more strength how to get to more stamina and this type of training is definitely it belongs to the category of hard training yeah hard training means for me also you need to sweat so during one week just ask yourself within the last week the past week how often did you sweat how often did your body really start to heat up heat up until until your body wants to cool down this is why we are sweating because you are asking for some performance of your body your body your organs your system starts to heat up and now uh, your system wants to cool your body down that's why you're sweating so and how often did this happen within the last week or the last months and this is something that you want to integrate into your daily practice because i think many problems nowadays that that this society is facing it it comes because of a lack of movement it comes because of a lack of movement that's why i also do not want to emphasize right now too much that you do just soft practices so my suggestion would be do for example the six day morning practice which are still for free do the weekend practices which are all still for free and in this the only thing that you will get from this 12 months course is it's getting deeper it's getting deeper but you can only go deeper when you have already started to build something up fundamentally about yourself meaning a really good relationship to your body and therefore i would say um, just make it simply like this sweat at least i don't know for the beginning three times per week really sweating and then automatically in between you have the soft times where you can just repeat the practices and the methods that i share with you in this in that 12 months course i think this is a good uh, good balance
yeah it also means if you have never done it before practice five push-ups first afterwards 10 push-ups 20 30 yeah, and then you move up yeah this is then only a question of of how much you like to challenge yourself but uh, but it's possible and it is a way of life it is a way of attitude it is the attitude of you will never be the best version of yourself because it takes a few lifetimes to reach so so therefore just do it every day a little bit yeah okay next question um, is it true that to reach good internal power you need to take some herb supplements? Um, so I think this question is a pretty advanced question and maybe is pretty irrelevant for the majority at the moment from what I know, from what I have been taught, it is not enough. No, first of all, it's not correct to start watching at the world and differentiating between something that is internal and something that is external. When we talk about it, we use these words internal, external, and by using it, we are separating things, but things are not separated. They are just used conce conceptually to ex ex express something. If you want to have power, therefore, which areas do you need to train? Everything. External power, internal power, power of the muscles, health of your muscles, health of your skeleton, health of your organs, health of the blood, health of all the liquids that are running within the body. So, and how do you change the chemistry of the liquids of your body? Well, there are ways to do it. And therefore, it is, it's up to you. It's up to you how deep do you want to go, in what are you interested in. And yes, these things are possible. So therefore, yeah, because like you mentioned now in this question, internal power yeah internal power power brings nothing if you cannot express it so therefore what you need is power which is consisting of internal power plus external power external structure work and internal methods internal cultivation cultivation of your organs cultivation of your tendons cultivation of your fascia cultivation of your breath cultivation of the chi cultivation of your mind intent your focus and willpower and also at the same time cultivating consciousness awareness spirit yes and so it's a it's a huge field okay yeah. um, is it crucial to have both feet or all toes pointing straight ahead in Madhu? What's the consequence if we turn the legs out a bit? Well, if you turn the feet and the knees a little bit more uh, outwards, oh, let me show you maybe. So very often, sometimes you have mapu which uh, look like this. Yeah. So here my feet are almost uh, like 30 degrees left out and 30 degrees right out, and the kneecaps they are also pointing outwards. But therefore, it's very easy for me. Uh, it's it's easy to go down. It's pretty easy to like uh, stay in this position. Yeah. But but um, this type of posture, it is used very very often in the normal traditional way of the Shaolin Shaolin Kung Fu. But when we are practicing it in these 12 months when you are be getting deeper and are becoming more sensitive for changes inside of our body then the emphasis is place both feet parallel 
keep the knees pointing to the front yeah yes so I would say at the moment it's important at a later point I can tell you why but for right now you do not want the, the knees to point outwards too much yeah, when you're still young you can do it when you're getting older you realize you have some knee pain this is one of the results of it but especially when it comes now to internal also to the internal practices or when it comes to the point of building up energy then it also plays a pretty crucial role how is your skeleton aligned and how is the pressure distributed um, inside the body yeah and if the legs are like standing outwards like this then if you are sensitive enough you will feel that a lot of energy and a lot of tension just starts to get stuck in this area here now all the energy from the leg it starts to it, it, it's blocked it's blocked over here it cannot connect or it's very difficult to connect to the upper body therefore the mabu or the horse stance which is practiced very often when we are in the internal practices when we are about energy cultivation therefore we don't go too wide we are a little bit more close but therefore when we're in the mabu both of the knees you, you have to take them in and it's this marble it's that horse stand so the feet facing to the front your knees are facing to the front and now it's different now the energy is not blocked in the lower torso area anymore now it's possible to travel and circulate also to the upper chest and the back and close the circle uh, in that way yeah. And what is the importance of where the eyes look in the practice of born? Where the attention is, there goes the chi. Energy follows attention. Yeah, energy follows attention. What does it mean? normally wherever you are watching this is where your attention is so if you want to direct some energy if you want to if you are making movements yeah it's, it's very simply yeah, without being too philosophical but the the punch yeah the strike yeah if i watch to the left side but punch out like this and my awareness especially if i watch somewhere at the tree and and punch out like this uh that's not everything that you can do it becomes different when your focus is there and then also the fist goes in that direction where the focus is where the attention is then also and there goes there goes also like uh, the energy because there's a difference between your body moving and your energy moving what we are practicing in all of these things is your body move and the energy move in the same direction and 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 supports what your body is doing yeah yeah for example uh, yeah very nice in the next in the next section of the of the Chan Gong Road Run is a very nice section which is going to come. Now I can show it to you right away, right now. Just watch it. Yeah, the section is going to look like this. Yeah, so first is like really nice, uh, very soft, cloud hands. Now from here, one time, you're going to open completely open. Then we come to the center, center, and then the first explosion now is sidewards. This one. 
Yeah, so if you make this without focus, if you if you make this like in the beginning, it's gonna you gonna look like this when you make it. Because there is something missing. Yeah, there is something missing. It is missing. You are you are moving the body. Yeah, you are moving the body, but the energy is not there. The energy is not there. You are moving the body, but something is missing on the inside. Yeah, I'm not sure if you see it right now in in this video, but I think in the recording that I'm going to upload, the quality is better, and then maybe you can see the difference between just moving the arms and letting the energy out so then it's not just the arm moving yeah the arm moving yeah it's not the arm the whole point of this practice is about the balance of yin and yang it's about the alignment of your heart your mind and your actions and that means it is this is the point yeah, this is the point <laughs> this is the point that is like really missing in like the the this is what is like beyond the martial art practice now To learn that whatever you are doing with your body, meaning you walk somewhere, you work something with the hands, you type something, it doesn't matter, you drive car. Always when the body is doing something and it is not supported by the internal drive, by the internal energy then there is just something missing that then there is just something missing then it looks like you're doing you're investing some work into it you're, you're investing some work but that work maybe is not gonna make anything grow because the energy which is supposed to be involved in it is not there and that means whatever you, we do with our body, our inside should actually have the same feeling to move into the same direction. To move into the same direction. And therefore we need to, um, we need to train it. And this is the reason why in the martial arts, yes, if you, if you punch somewhere, uh, there you watch. This is this is the way how in the martial arts is very clear. You want you want the power to be here, then you must watch here. You want it to be there, then you watch there. Yeah, you want it up here, then you go up here. You want it down, then it goes down. You want it straight, then it needs to go straight. Yeah, where you want the energy to go, this is where you watch. This means to focus your energy, to focus your attention. This is why we need the concentration. And this is another point of the martial art practice. Yeah. Okay, another question? transform the energy generated with Qigong uh, into powerful pushes or other body expressions and how to bring it in daily life <laughs> the Shaolin Kung Fu the traditional Shaolin Kung Fu uh, doesn't have the emphasis to use any internal internal powers let's say in order to just push someone around it is possible to do so, but first of all, there are other there are other arts which are practicing this. Um, let's say which have more emphasis of practicing these things. At the moment, it's uh, it's 
very very in, in what I'm trying to share with you it's very very irrelevant um, how to do these things so yeah I, I think it, it doesn't apply to many people which are inside this group but if you are still interested to know how to use internal energies for example um, to express them especially towards other people other person yeah, beyond yourself then there are plenty of very high skilled teachers and masters out there they can show you they can show you but it's up to them if they will teach you yeah, so first of all at the moment this is in this course I am using many martial art practices I'm using the Kung Fu I'm using the Qigong methods I'm using breathing methods I'm using some movements some patterns and postures that come for the martial art practice but my point is not to is my point at the moment is not to teach any one of you how to how to beat up somebody else the only thing I'm teaching you right now is how to beat up yourself because if you are able to beat up yourself then absolutely then afterwards if you still decide then okay I have beat up myself I know how it feels and if you now still think now you want to go out and beat up somebody else then it's fine but without having ever beaten yourself up without having ever challenged yourself without having ever put yourself into into some phases of training where you where you go through your own personal suffering first I think it's pointless to even try and start to learn anything how to push other people around so this is why first of all discipline yourself challenge yourself defeat yourself and don't watch too much out there who else you want to defeat out there yeah therefore uh, I would say this is not the purpose of uh, what I'm trying to share to all of you okay Mjolchan, maybe one one or two more questions and then we need to train <laughs> okay um, as online students of the Shaolin Temple Europe um, could we have more frequent connections with the activities or ceremonies of the temple? Um, so, uh, I'm not quite sure what you m what you mean with that question, but sooner or later, as soon as our capacity and our workload here also allows, then uh, if you're interested, we can of course uh, maybe film some ceremonies and let you take part uh, in them just by watching them but watching them reading about them seeing them is still different than being here and experiencing them that's why yeah that's why I would say if you would ever be interested then maybe come to one of our big festivals that we have during the year always three times per year there are quite big big uh, festi festivities in the temple and elsewise if the time is right yeah, you might be able to come one day and just visit us here in person and experience for yourself. And elsewise, just go to any Buddhist monastery uh, that you have maybe nearby your city or your town and just watch the type of ceremonies that they are doing over there. Because, yeah, they are same, same, but different. Okay, last question. Do you use any essential oil um, or a special tea or body oil for recovery? <laughs> Actually, there's something really nice that happened, which is that one of my disciples, um, one of my disciples now who came from the United States, who started here from January, um, first of all, he studied under one of my master brothers also who was in, uh, in China. So he studied there uh, a type of Kung Fu, 
but he was also always interested for example learning about herbs so therefore he is like a, a herbal specialist and he's making some type of alchemy and and some mixtures normally until now mostly with european herbs or western herbs but meanwhile that also we are starting to receive um, other recipes so yes slowly but surely we are also starting to to get back into the footsteps of what our ancestors used to used to do when they were not able to use i don't know to to depend on other people giving them any type of treatment so what we are also trying to develop for ourselves right now of course yeah is to take care of yourself with everything that is available to you and this also means this is where where all these ancient knowledge mm, now starts to hit in because what does the self mastery mean self mastery means you take your life into your hands in order to master yourself meaning that you are becoming your own master because if you are not becoming your own master somebody else is going to master you no and this is just that decision where we say okay i don't want that so better take care of myself and this means in all all areas in all aspects this is why i train myself this is why i take care of myself this is why i treat myself and this is why i want to have the medicine which is also working for the things that we are doing over here and yes and it hasn't been easy of course to to sometimes get to this type of knowledge and now uh, yeah now for example i don't know if you saw the announcement but this year for example i'm having quite uh, i have i'm having quite a, a big honor in hosting one master here in the temple yeah and yeah people sometimes ask so yeah why why is it for example so expensive to join these these courses and what is just being forgotten sometimes along all the way is in order for any dedicated practitioner to get to some type of knowledge it took us 20 years it took us 30 years it took us many many years of very hard practice of traveling throughout the complete world and and just looking for this method and looking for this recipe and all these type of things and of course we want to share we want to share it but I also think it's a really, um, it's another way of just showing respect yeah, by valuing when people yeah, or when different masses are starting to open their book of knowledge and sharing it um, with the people. And because sometimes I just, I don't know how to say it. meanwhile i was also traveling uh, throughout quite large parts of the world and i know i know what sometimes people are also charging for different things and what then they get in in exchange and just for an example here in our monastery if you are coming and you would like to have like uh, a private lesson with one of the masters over here then we are of course also charging a tuition fee yeah this tuition fee for example but if i just imagine that tuition fee is about the amount that somebody is spending in one evening when he goes out drinking so and 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 i'm just thinking okay either you are spending this money right now going out and and have a night out drinking with your friends or you have one hour and one of the masses is sharing one method with you where you are benefiting if you are using it 
where you are benefiting from it for the next five, ten, or the end of your life, then sorry, it's out of question for me where to invest that money. And so this is the way how I see where the value of things come from. And, and if somebody is offering something where I can already tell if somebody would know what this practice will do with you, then, then, um, yeah, I don't know. The, then it, it, it's going to be out of question. And on the other side, the same thing also is everything is an offering. There is no must. This is an offering. And it's great to have nowadays the possibility because there were times even if you had money, no matter how much, and you want to have this knowledge, yeah, but it's not available. Nobody is sharing it. So yeah, even if you, if you would have if you would be willing to pay double or three times the amount or whatsoever, yeah, but there's nobody there who is able even to share it with you. So, and therefore, this is just like my point also for you now that you are in this course, how I'm standing to the point of uh, knowledge, energy exchange, and the value of teachings. Yeah, and if I would not be, if I would not stand behind the teachings that I am making available either through me or either through the Shaolin Temple Europe or either through any of the platforms that are meanwhile, um, that are meanwhile uh, publicly available, if I would not stand behind it, you would not see them. So this is this is my point of it. Uh, yes. Okay. Now enough said. I would say we now just start with our practice. So make yourself some space, and after I finish my cup of tea, we start. <laughs> 